Ikea.com. You know Ikea. You probably built furniture from Ikea. We're going to audit their website and give our thoughts. So let's get into it. First impression. All right. Uh, what? This already very first impression is very poor because you are forcing the user to accept these cookies. And also, I don't really understand, like, what is this page? Yes. Yeah, so I will click find by me. I accept. So, yeah, this is what you do when you get to the website. You have to choose what you want to do. So I don't know. My first impression is what? Nine out of ten people come to Ikea to buy something online. Right. That would be my first impression. Not to learn about Ikea, a museum. No, I just want to buy a bookcase. I Wait, what is <laughs> Ikea at H22? I, I don't care. There's a disconnect. <laughs> Now what you have to do is um, we're going to actually navigate the website as if we wanted to buy something. So now you have to accept where, uh, what version of the website you want to go to. So we're here in the US. So you have to click this button right here. Um, so we are what? Two clicks in. And now this Another has a, <laughs> a pop up. So they want to know our location. So I guess if they later down the process, maybe that would be to um you know for shipping locate, or yeah. something three clicks um okay so here we are another click i already accepted the banner or i already accepted the cookies down here um great i have to click again <laughs> as you can see this are uh, in our opinion is not already a good user experience you're four clicks in and mm -hmm. you haven't even seen anything so let's go ahead and just uh what do you want to do maybe just look at beds sure okay so Click on products. Uh, where do we go? Beds and beds. Nice. That's a what? Seven clicks, eight clicks. I can't even choose a bed yet. Like it should be at this point, at, at least I should be able to see all the beds, like she said, and filter them out. Right. Because now if I want, let's say I click on a twin. But what happens if I made a mistake where I realize this isn't quite what I want? You have to then go, go back. back Let's say I want a full size instead. Yeah, that's here. not a great <laughs> user experience because you're not allowing people to make mistakes and easily correct them. Yeah, you're so, kind of forcing users yeah. to uh, navigate the way that IKEA wants you to navigate. Not, I, I feel like they didn't get much. Which is kind of typical for IKEA. When you <laughs> think about it, you have to walk through their maze in the store. Uh -huh. So this is like a maze on their website. Yeah. So maybe it's their brand. That is, <laughs> that's a good point. I think that really, <laughs> that might be onto something. Just click and see how everything works. So it looks like they Their have... pictures aren't bad. I will give them that. I do like how they have the example of it in an actual bedroom mm -hmm. because that's really important for furniture stores. You have to see it in the space in order to kind of visualize what it would look like in your space. So yeah. I do like that. But overall, I just find these pages very clunky. Yeah. Do you want to go ahead and just add one to bag? Yeah, let's, let's just... pretend that we're going to buy this. So if you click, uh, what was it, add to bag, you're now at the shopping cart. Okay. And, and they have a COVID-19 alert, which... That's nice because there is issues with distribution centers and stuff yeah. because of COVID. So I, I like that they have that. So I clicked it and there was like a lag. There was a pretty significant lag. So let me put in a zip code here in the Philadelphia area. Let me do a pickup because I would like to see if it actually will recognize the zip code and put us near um, a store. All right. So I click select a store and there... Um, the Philly one doesn't even show up. Yeah, the Philly one or the Hawken one, which is the other one, that's not even showing up. So it must be that maybe they don't have them in stock, but um, it just defaults us to Brooklyn. So that's that's not quite the best because yeah. if they don't have it at the two Ikeas near us, uh, just let us know then. That right. would be, in my opinion, a better experience. So um, already I'm not that impressed with the checkout process. It seems just like the rest of the website, a little, a little bit clunky. clunky and very laggy. Like I'm just clicking here. And so let's say I do want to do delivery. They give you the options to select the date, the time. And then I believe you just click the rest of the process. We just click next. And then you put all this information in. So, <laughs> um, so overall navigating the website is kind of clunky. Now let's say I'm a user and I don't want to actually order a product. I want to go back to that original 
home screen with all the different things showing up. Let's see if we can navigate back there. So you would click this icon and okay, it's bringing me back to the store. I click this again, nope. So how would a user get back to the homepage? <laughs> this I found out earlier is you have to actually go down to change country. That's how you navigate back to the Ikea homepage. Uh, what do you think about that? That is not I just goes to show you that like all. you don't even need to have that homepage. That homepage. But if somebody, let's say, did want to go back and read about the museum, there would actually be no way the user would be able to get back unless they knew to click this button. Right. So you click I don't here. see it anywhere else besides yeah. here. So let's say we did want to go back and read about the museum. Okay. If you look up here, the domain is completely separate from everything else. So it's clear that IKEA built a website and then they just didn't want to integrate all of the different platforms together. So they just have like separate subdomains and domain. It's a very confusing experience. Um, and then there's another pop up for cookies. Oh yeah, that was, yeah, that's great. So it doesn't recognize the cookies in between the domains. So that's. Which <laughs> makes sense. I guess it's it a makes, different domain, yeah. but. It's so kind of like annoying. Yeah, it's just you're making the user interact with things that you don't need to. So here's a whole completely different branded um, menu system compared to the rest of the website. Because if you remember on the left side is where the pop up was. So on these other subdomains, it's a whole it's literally a whole other uh, website. So the user now has to learn how to navigate. Um, a totally different system just because they're not they didn't organize their website correctly um okay so let's get back let's say i, I navigate here and i want to go back to shopping again okay you same thing i can't click the ikea button to get me back so how do i i actually have no idea how to get back um this is not scripted or anything um you can't yeah you can't get back to the home page. Hmm, that's not good. So unless if I agree to this cookie, does it do something? No. No? Okay, so maybe on the footer, I can go back to choose country? No? Wow. This is a, when it comes to user experience, this is a great use case of do not do this because <laughs> I, I, I'm not joking. This is the first time we've been here and we can't, figure out how to go back to the website, the homepage. Well, to Ikea.com. Yeah, okay. So what we can do is you can always hold this button down and go back to Ikea. Um, okay, so that was fun. So let's go back into the store and... I do like that they have a search function at the top because sometimes you know the specific name of the piece that you want to buy and you can just type it in there mm -hmm. and it will pull up all of those items. I do like that. And another cool thing is this yeah, photo we, search. Yeah, we, we came across this when we looked at the website. So we actually you... have one of the Calyx bookshelves. So I it's took right a here. picture yep. of it and we're gonna upload it and see what comes up. Great. So it analyzes the image with their AI technology and it gives you the products that they think are in the image. Yeah. So they did so let me scroll down pull. Here. So that's it right here, right? Yeah. Yeah. And they did pull up the cubbies. The gray cubby is at the top. That's the first thing yeah. that showed up. So it recognized what's in the picture. It yeah. pulled up a planner too. So it probably thinks that the planners are from Ikea. I think they're actually from Home Depot, mm -hmm. but they look pretty similar. I would expect the Calyx bookshelf to, to be, be first, yeah. one of the first things. So it maybe needs a little bit of improvement, but a pretty cool feature. Yeah. Now we're going to move on to the technical and the performance of the website. So I already ran some speed tests before, and I'm going to analyze it and go over some red flags that I saw. Okay. So the first thing is... I just dropped in the homepage into GT Metrics. So this is a great tool where it shows you all the resources that are loading, how long it takes, how many requests, all of that stuff. So as you can see, the performance is kind of low. It's at a 76, structure is 84. These are okay. The web vitals aren't that bad. Um, where I saw some major red flags was right down here. 
and that would be the page size. So as you can see, we're at like a 5.6. So you have to load up almost six megs worth of just the images alone on the home page. Um, this honestly is a huge red flag and a company this size, this is a huge, uh, in my opinion, embarrassment because this is something that anybody that designs websites knows you do not throw large images on the website. So if I go under waterfall, uh, you can actually go ahead and see which images are causing problems. So best practice is you want to have your images well below one megabyte. There's mm -hmm. very rare that you need to have an image uh, that forces the users to download a megabyte. Um, it's just not, it's not best practice. So if I go here, you can see that it's this, uh, I guess it's the museum image is 1.7 megs. It's just way too it's large. Gigantic. They yeah. uploaded a huge file and we see a lot of people doing that, but for a company as big as yeah. Ikea, they it's, should have developers that know not to do it's, this. It's, it's, it's kind of embarrassing me, honestly. So there's all, all of these uh, images, one meg, one meg, one. So these top like four or five images should be heavily compressed. And then that's going to make you score better up here mm -hmm. and just give a better user experience. Because right. um, if you loaded this website on your phone. Yeah, you would waste six would, megs of data. Yeah, it would not be good. You would, <laughs> so like these are the images right here, these background images. I believe it's these two are the worst mm -hmm. ones. So you could see that they're not very big images, but yet they're serving up these images like to fit in a 4K monitor or right. something. So overall, it's not it's not the worst, but it's definitely below Could be average. Improved. Yeah. And if you go into Google PageSpeed Insights, it's a similar tool. They go ahead and they crawl your website and give you any uh, recommendations to speed it up. And the number one opportunity is these page or these images Are need not to be resized. Sized. Yeah. So Google crawled the website, saw that, and flagged it. Um, so What's this, cool about PageSpeed Insights is it separates it out from desktop and yeah. mobile you might not know this but google actually crawls your website mobile first yeah. so if your mobile score is bad that's going to affect gonna, your seo yeah that's a good tip ikea probably doesn't have to worry about seo <laughs> but if you're a small business owner yeah you have to worry about it but as far as like performance you don't force six megs worth of images on right. users that's just a horrible page experience for mm -hmm. everybody. For Google, Google doesn't want to crawl websites and, and get six megs worth right. of data. The next thing we like to cover is the accessibility of the website. So let's go ahead and open up the scores that we like to run. So this one is with a, a checker, is what I call it. And this right here, they did fail 11 different things. And it looks like most of them are, what's the old? Alt times. Yeah, so best practice when you have an image, you describe wanna make it. sure that you can describe it. So I'll give you a quick example. If one of these images, like right here, it tells you what the laundry bag, so this is good. This page has an alt text. It's describing what the image is. So somebody with a screen reader, they can't see the image correctly. So the screen reader is gonna read back the description of the image. Mm -hmm. So it looks like on their homepage, they missed that by quite a bit. So they failed technically. And another tool I like to use is called Wave. And it looks like um, they failed with one error here. So technically they did not pass accessibility. And at a company this size, this is very problematic because mm -hmm. they have tons of people who are using screen readers. Overall, we think the IKEA website really needs some improvements, especially since they're such a big company. We thought their website would look a lot better. Yeah, overall, I would say that uh, the navigation was extremely poor and confusing. And the fact that they failed accessibility um, is a huge red flag for us. Yes. Overall, we gave the website IKEA.com a C minus. That's it for today's website audit. If there's a website that you think we should audit, leave a comment down below and we'll make a video on it. If you like videos like this, give it a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and ring the notification bell for whenever we upload new videos. Bye. Bye.